next talk will be given by Dakshita. This is joint work with Dennis Hoffheint, Ivo Jager, and Alistair Hai from Waters and Mark Zangri. So, Thanks. Go Thanks. Uh, so this talk is about universal samplers. Um, and I'll start by telling you about this notion. Uh, so, the, so there are many cryptographic protocols that require the use of parameters that have been generated by a trusted third party. Um, and there are many examples of such protocols, including non-interactive ZK, low round MPC, uh, non-interactive, non-malleable protocols, etc. And they use various kinds of trusted uh, parameters, uh, such as public keys, ciphertext, signatures, all of these that have been generated securely without revealing the randomness used to sample them. Um, and the question that we ask in this work is, can a single setup be used to generate a universal set of parameters that can be used by parties who can derive their own para uh, secure parameters out of this uh, universal setup for various applications later. Um, so the idea of a universal sampler, uh, the, the work of a universal sampler would be on input some distribution D to output a securely generated sample from the distribution D. And here by secure sampling, I mean being able to generate a sample from this distribution without having to reveal the randomness used for sampling. Um, so for universal samplers, we uh, consider two natural notions of security. Uh, the first is bounded selective security. And the second notion that we consider is unbounded security, even when the distributions to be sampled from are chosen adaptively. And I'll tell you more about these two notions uh, in a little more detail now. So in the bounded selective se uh, security setting, uh, uh, we, we look at the security game as a real and ideal world game where the, uh, the adversary first decides on some distribution D star and submits this as a challenge distribution to the challenger. The challenger then sends the adversary uh, the universal sampler program P together with the output of the program P on input the distribution D star, which is supposed to be a secure sample from the distribution D star. Um, and in the ideal world, we want that when the adversary submits uh, a, a challenge distribution D star, he gets the universal sampler program P star, which is a slightly modified version of the program P, together with externally generated secure samples from the distribution D star. Uh, and the program P star is exactly like P on all inputs, except on D star, it has been modified to output the external secure samples instead of generating the samples uh, uh, within itself. Um, and the definition of bounded secu selective security requires that these two worlds be indistinguishable. Uh, and this is the one bounded case where the, uh, where the adversary gives a single challenge distribution, uh, but there could be a, a natural extension of this to bounded number of challenges. And uh, without going too much into the details of that, uh, I'll, I'll just tell you a, a very simple way to construct uh, universal samplers with bounded selective security. So the sampler is just going to consist of an obfuscated program that embeds a PRF key K and on input some distribution D uses the distribution to sample from the PRF some randomness R and then uses this randomness that it sampled to generate a to, to sample D of R, which is a secure sample from the distribution D. So you could think of D as being, uh, for example, as being uh, a public key corresponding to some, uh, some scheme where the secret key must remain hidden. So um, if the obfuscation was a virtual black box obfuscation, then the PRF key K inside the program is hidden. Uh, and therefore, the output of the PRF on input some challenge distribution D star is going to be hidden. And thus, the value, the output of the program, which is D star on R star, which is the output of the PRF, is going to be computationally indistinguishable from externally generated secure parameters P star from the same distribution. So in the selective setting, assuming VBV obfuscation, the solution is simple. Uh, if, um, because these two programs are just computationally indistinguishable. Um, and where the second program on input D star just outputs an external sample and stops, and on every other input uh, behaves the same way. But given indistinguishability obfuscation, we can no longer guarantee that the key K is hidden. 
this is still this still follows the simple punctured programming techniques developed by Sahai and Waters. Uh, we can replace the key k with a puncturable PRF key, uh, and a puncturable PRF is just like a normal PRF, except that it allows for the generation of punctured, punctured keys that eva that allow evaluation of the PRF on all inputs except some specific input z. And the additional security guarantee that a puncturable PRF provides is that given a key that has been punctured at an input z, uh, the value of the PRF on input z is indistinguishable from random. So using such a PRF, one can, uh, it's, it's easy to notice that the program above is computationally indistinguishable from the program below. Uh, because, uh, sorry, the program above is functionally equivalent to the program below because uh, the, the program, this program just replaces the key k with a key that has been punctured at input d star and sets r star to be the output of the PRF on d star. So uh, if one were to compare the functionality of these two, it is identical um, and therefore, um, and therefore by obfuscation, uh, one can replace this program with this one. Note that this program still does not output the external samples. So in order to force the program to output external samples, uh, what one can do is use the security of the puncturable PRF to replace the value R star here with a completely random value. And then in the next hybrid, because this program in the if case computes the distribution on input a completely random value, this is exactly the same as just outputting an external sample from the same distribution. So this is just uh, an identical uh, hybrid. And um, so we just saw that in the bounded selective setting, it is relatively easy to, uh, to construct uh, uh, such a universal sampler scheme that allows you to generate samples from different distributions. But the motivating example was to have one single setup which parties could then use later to sample from different distributions. So in the actual world, the universal sampler program would be published at the very beginning and then parties would get to adaptively decide distributions based on this program and then they would either get the output of the program on input D star in the real world or in the ideal world, the adversary would be given externally generated samples. But as such, this game doesn't make much sense because if in the plane model, the adversary already has access to the universal sampler program, he can just be evaluating it on any inputs he likes. He doesn't really need to even submit this challenge inputs. Uh, and so how are we even going to be able to observe what he's querying the program on? And which is why in the adaptive setting, uh, it is difficult to obtain security without having a way to observe the queries of the adversary and then um, be able to program in the external parameters based on the adversary's queries. Uh, moreover, uh, if we want the ability to, uh, uh, to generate an unbounded number of samples, uh, this in an extreme case implies a programmable random oracle. And why is that? One could just use, uh, one could just set D to be the uniform distribution and try to obtain multiple uniformly distributed samples. And by our security definition, these should be indistinguishable from external samples for an unbounded number of such samples. And thus in, in, in a corner case, this already implies a programmable random oracle. So we're left with no option, but to work in the observable programmable random oracle model. And now our main result is we show how to combine a random oracle together with obfuscation to get uh, universal samplers that are adaptively secure. So one can also look at it as a transformation from a random oracle that just generates uniformly distributed samples to a sampling oracle that generates samples from any distribution that you like in an adaptive and unbounded secure fashion. So going back to the game that we saw, it now makes a little bit more sense because one could possibly publish a program and have a random oracle and now have the adversary uh, gen generate his queries and query the random oracle on them and that is where we will observe the adversary's queries and use the random oracle to program the outputs um, before uh, 
so to program the external samples into the output of the adversary. So this hopefully makes more sense now. Uh, and um, I'll just talk a little bit more about some of the barriers in constructing such a scheme with adaptive security for unbounded sampling. And the first main barrier is that we don't really want to obfuscate the random oracle itself because obfuscating oracle-aided circuits um, that make calls to the random oracle, let's say, is undesirable for many reasons. Um, the main one being that we don't yet clearly understand what it means to obfuscate circuits that have oracle gates inside of them. Uh, also, a recent result by Agarwal, Coppola, and Waters shows that uh, constructing functional encryption uh, where keys are given out for circuits that have oracle gates inside them is impossible. So we don't, don't really want to get into that. So we'd like to keep the random oracle separate from the obfuscation. Uh, the second problem is that within an obfuscated program, uh, one cannot hardwire an unbounded number of values because this is going to blow up the size of the obfuscated program to an unbounded, uh, an a priori unbounded uh, amount. Uh, however, the random oracle does allow for programming an unbounded amount of information. Uh, however, we can't just set the output of the random oracle to an external sample since the random oracle outputs have to be uniformly distributed whereas the samples that we want to sample from are not necessarily that way. So we can't do that and we'll have to somehow set up some means of communication between the random oracle and the obfuscation so as to be able to generate samples in a secure manner. So in the ideal world, uh, our, what we will uh, actually be doing is we'll observe each query that the adversary makes to the universal sampler via the random oracle. Once we observe this query, we will program a pseudo-random encoding of the external samples corresponding to this query into the output of the random oracle. And this encoding will use techniques similar to those developed uh, in Sahai Waters for pseudo-random sparse triggers. And these sparse triggers are then going to trigger the obfuscated program and which will then detect that the, this is some kind of sparse encoding, extract the parameters inside the encoding and output it. Uh, to implement this, we develop a new technique called delayed backdoor programming. And here is a super high level overview of our uh, hybrid experiments. So for every query D star that the adversary makes to the universal sampler, we'll obtain external parameters sampled from the distribution D star. Uh, in the first sequence of hybrids, we'll start by hardwiring these external samplers into the universal sampler program. In the next sequence of hybrids, we'll develop a way to transfer, the, uh, transfer an encoding of the hardwired value from the obfuscated program into the output of the random oracle. And then we'll be able to unhardwire the samples from the program so as to keep its size small, so that we don't need to keep hardwiring many values into the same obfuscated program. So this is a super high level overview of the hybrids. I'll go into some more details, but still I won't be able to discuss all the details here. So our uh, actual um, construction has a parameter generation procedure where parties start by querying the random oracle on input their distribution and obtain some output u from the random oracle. They then uh, input this random oracle output u into, the op into an obfuscated program that checks if this random oracle output has some hidden trapdoor format. If it does have this secret trapdoor format, it extracts the trapdoor and outputs it. But if this check fails, then the program just proceeds normally to sample some randomness using the random oracle output and outputs a new program that has hardwired this key C that was sampled using the randomness from the random oracle and uh, generates more randomness using this key C and takes as input the distribution from which samples are required and then outputs the distribution applied to this randomness, giving a sample from the distribution. So this is going to be a two-step, uh, uh, this is going to be a two-step program, um, where parties are first going to run the universal sampler 
on input u to obtain the program pc with c hardwired in it and then run program pc on the actual distribution d to obtain a sample from d. And then parties can go and repeat this for other input distributions an unbounded number of times and even if the distribution is chosen as a function of this main uh, obfuscated program. So uh, the way our hybrids will proceed is suppose the adversary has challenge input d star and let u star denote the output of the random oracle on input d star. Then like uh, I was telling you before, the first consists of a hard wiring step where we are going to puncture and set g star as the output of the program on input u star, where in the beginning g star is going to have the same functionality as the old main program so that we can argue indistinguishability by IO. And then later, this will give us the flexibility to change g star in such a way, um, uh, but we'll get to changing d star a little bit later. Uh, now that we have this flexibility uh, of having hardwired g star, our next task is going to be to transfer an encoding of g star into the output of the random oracle so that we can remove this hardwire, uh, hardwiring from this main program. And the way we're going to do that is to generate instead of generating u star uniformly at random, we are going to generate it using a sparse trigger encoding of g star. Again, I'm, I've pushed the uh, details of how these are generated under the rug, but this follows roughly the same strategy as Sahai Waters to generate sparse triggers. So once we've uh, transferred the job of uh, encoding g star to the random oracle, note that the first two lines here perform exactly the same job. That is on input d star, if u equals u star, output g star versus if u star has the trapdoor, output the trapdoor, do exactly the same thing because the trapdoor corresponding to u star is exactly g star. And this means we can unhardwire this, this line of code since uh, g star is now embedded as a trapdoor corresponding to u star. So now note that the program is back to being of the same size and uh, we, we just have this, ex, this g star into which we have still not programmed the external parameters. So that is the next step, um, which we call the, back, the delayed backdoor programming step, where at, in the end, now that we have isolated g star, we can program in the external samples into g star just the way that we did in the selective secure, uh, secure setting, which means that the adversary on input d star obtains some u that instead of encoding the old g star, uh, encodes a different g star star, which has programmed inside it the external parameters k star. And now this sequence of hybrids can be repeated for all queries d star an unbounded number of times, because again, like I mentioned, the size of the main program remains exactly the same, and the size of, uh, the size of pc is at most the size of g star star for every d star which just hardwires one value per challenge. So, um, so each g star hardwires a single value and um, this keeps the size bounded. So um, that was the high level overview of uh, the adaptive security steps. Uh, now I will get to applications. So the, the motivating application was to have a universal setup that provides a master setup algorithm for all cryptographic protocols. Uh, furthermore, this also allows simple constructions of identity-based encryption, non-interactive key exchange without setup, uh, that is also adaptively secure in the random oracle model, and adaptive distributed broadcast encryption. Uh, I'll just highlight one of the applications so that you can see how simple it is to build things once you have such a secure sampling algorithm. Um, so non-interactive key exchange is a problem where there's a set of parties um, that each have some secret values and write down some public values on a public bulletin board. Now a subset of these parties would like to come together and derive a shared secret key for this uh, subset completely non-interactively in such a way that this key can, be, can later be used for communication within this subset of parties. And no external party or collusion of external parties 
can guess what the key for uh, this subset is. And um, there are, again, two main notions of non-interactive key exchange. The first is the selective notion, where the adversary must decide the challenge subset of parties for which the adversary is going to guess a key uh, and which parties it's going to corrupt before observing the parameters of the scheme. And the second is an adaptive notion, where the ad adversary may adaptively choose challenge uh, subset and the parties that it plans to corrupt after observing the parameters of the scheme. So uh, there are many schemes now that meet the selective notion of security. I've only uh, cited the ones that use obfuscation, but there are others that are based on multilinear maps, some of which have been broken. Um, and so our work obtains an adaptive notion of security, but from somewhat more standard assumptions in the random oracle model. Uh, there's also a way to you make strong adaptive assumptions to achieve uh, uh, non-interactive key exchange. Um, and let me now define adaptive non-interactive key exchange a little bit more formally. In the real world, the adversary submits a subset S1 of parties um, that it plans to corrupt, and it gets to generate the public parameters of all parties within this subset S1. It then receives the public parameters of all the remaining honest parties. It can now choose to corrupt a different subset S2 of parties, and it gets the secret values and the secret state of all parties within this subset S2. It, can, it then also chooses a, su a subset S star of parties for which it's going to guess the secret key. And this could be one party, or, sorry, this could, sorry, this has to be a subset of one or more parties. Then it's given the, the uh, shared secret key for the group corresponding to S star in the real world. And finally, the adversary can choose another subset of parties to corrupt. Um, and in the ideal world, the adversary plays the same way, except that for the challenge subset, it's given something completely random that is completely independent of the actual key for this subset. And the adversary should not be able to distinguish between the real and ideal world, as long as it did not corrupt any party within the challenge subset. Because if it did, that would allow it to trivially distinguish. And so given this definition, uh, I'll show you a simple construction that meets it, making use of universal samplers. So there's going to be a public bulletin board. Uh, parties will sample secret keys and public keys from a public key encryption scheme. And, <coughs> and the public parameters are going to consist of the universal samplers program. Now, given all these public values, consider the following. So, consider the following group of parties. Um, the first four parties want to derive their secret key. And consider the following distribution that on input, some randomness R and some additional randomness for encryption encrypts this randomness R under the public keys of each of these four parties using the randomness Renc and appends all these ciphertexts and just outputs them. So, now suppose one of these parties wanted to derive the shared secret key for group A, B, C, D. This party would just run the universal sampler on input this distribution D, A, B, C, D. So this distribution is going to generate four ciphertexts that encrypt the same random value under the public keys of all four parties. And now this party can use his own secret key to, to recover the value R from the fourth ciphertext. And now note that just by correctness of the universal sampler scheme, all parties within the group will decode to the same randomness R, and thus will share the same secret key. Whereas for any party that is outside of this subset, these ciphertexts can be securely replaced with externally generated secure encryptions of R, uh, and again, without going into the details, uh, intuitively this means that just by CPS security of the public key encryption scheme, um, an external party cannot distinguish an encryption of the actual key R from an encryption of some completely random value. Uh, now, here we assume that there was a setup that generated the universal sampler program. That can be removed, but we'll need to make some changes to the public key encryption scheme. Uh, we'll need it to be CCA secure in that case. 
Uh, again, I'm not going to go too much into the details of how that works, but it's just, just to highlight that universal samplers give an easier and more elegant solution to some problems. Um, and now there have been several follow-up applications of universal samplers after our paper was initially posted. Um, and some of them include universal signature aggregators uh, by Hohenberger, Coppola, and Waters that allow you to aggregate various signatures uh, generated according to different signing and verification keys uh, in a compact way. Then uh, in construction of adaptively secure constrained PRFs in the random oracle model, uh, universal samplers together with attribute-based encryption played a crucial role. Uh, this paper was uh, by Hofheinz, Kamath, Coppola, and Waters. Uh, then universal samplers were also recently used in context of cryptocurrency by uh, Blocky and Zoo. Um, also by Garg, Pandey, Srinivasan, and Zanri. They modified the original universal sampler con uh, construction and used it to get non-interactive key exchange from polynomial functional encryption. Um, and there's been a generic transformation from signatures to a special class of signatures uh, by Liang, Li, and Chang. So, um, um, and that's it about the follow-up applications. Um, that I'd like to conclude. Um, thank you. And <laughs> I'm happy to take any questions. composition because uh, sometimes uh, to get uh, universal composability you have these uh, new setup and then there is this issue about having multiple sessions and then there what you want is uh, like one global setup for all sessions because otherwise it's hard to uh, kind of uh, write the simulator for all sessions simultaneously so mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just like random talk I don't know if there's something to be said about uh, uh, universal composability perhaps uh, not that right, thanks, uh, thank you again.